In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. We continue 1 Kings chapter 22, which is the last chapter, but it might take us a little bit of time today, okay? Because we have to get some background. But Adil will lead us first in just recapping of what we did uh, last week really quick, okay? For the Adil. Okay. Um, so we finished chapter 21 uh, with the incident, what happened with um, with the king of Israel, Ahab. And just to, to remind you that uh, we have we have two kings because the kingdom has split it to the north and the south. The okay. north, what chapter? Chapter 22, the last chapter of first kings. Okay. So the, the north kingdom has 10 tribes, 10 tribes. This is in the north. The southern kingdom, two tribes, Judas and Benjamin down south. So we, at any given of time, we have two kings, king of the north and king of the south at any given time, okay? This happened, if you remember, happened right after uh, King Solomon. After King Solomon died, the kingdom split it to the north and to the south. So in verse, in, in sorry, in chapter 21, what happened is um, that the king of Israel, which is in the north, wanted to take a piece of land at, attached to his palace. And the guy, uh, Naboth, refused to sell it to him. He told him, this is my father's inheritance and I cannot sell you the land. And King Ahab, King Ahab's wife planned um, something, you know, to for the people to say that Naboth uh, blasphemed against God and the king. And as a result of that, they executed him and King Ahab was able to take or to steal that piece of land. That's when Elijah the prophet came to him and told him because we did that, and it was really bad in the eyes of God, the dogs will lick your blood, which means that he will die in a very bad way and his, the dogs will even lick uh, his, his blood. Um, and that happened and Elijah left and basically after this incident, three years passed, three years passed by, then we'll start chapter 22. Now, at this point of time, we have Ahab, the king of the north, and Jehoshaphat, the king of the south, okay? Jehoshaphat was a good guy, was a righteous guy, which is in the south, was a righteous guy for a change, because that was very rare for a king, whether in the north or the south, to be good. All of them, or most of them, were uh, uh, worshiping idols, were trying to demolish anything related to God, uh, especially in the north. The north, I mean, all kings in the north were bad. In the south, from every now and then, you get a good, you get a, you get a good king. One of one, one of the good ones was Jehoshaphat. However, Jehoshaphat made a big mistake. Being even being a righteous man, by letting her son or daughter, we do not know the Bible didn't mention, letting her son or daughter marry the son or daughter of the king of the north, Ahab. So there was kind of a relationship, family relationship between Jehoshaphat in the south and the king of the north, Ahab, um, because the son, one of his, the sons or the daughter got married. And that's how they got this kind of relationship. That was a big mistake for Jehoshaphat. And uh, obviously we learned from this that we should not have any ties with anything bad. We should, not, we should cut every tie. Jehoshaphat would have been a perfect guy or a perfect king if he wouldn't have done this. Abuna wants to give us, uh, before we continue, Abuna wants to give us some background about the king of the south, which his name is Jehoshaphat. Very good. So I think by now you know who Ahab is and how bad he is and how much God is still wanting to get him back. 
right? And God did a lot, like even with the battle, God still went out with him uh, to get, uh, to help him out and still to speak to him and sending Elijah and sending different prophets and, and, and all of that. So because this final chapter, it has a work between uh, Ahab and Jehoshaphat. We're just going to get a glimpse of who Jehoshaphat is. And if you want to flip to Second Chronicles chapter 17. Okay, we're going to just have a look at who Jehoshaphat is uh, in, from Second Chronicles chapter 17. So Jehoshaphat, his father, is a very good king. His name is Asa. Okay, King Asa is a, one of the very good kings. Okay, so he names his son right from the get-go, you can tell. So Asa wanted his son to rule, and he wanted him to be according to God. So he named him Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat, the name by itself, means God judges or God rules. So basically, he's, he's trying to tie this to his, uh, like embedded in his, in his son's mind, that God is the one who's going to judge or rule through you. Okay, this is very important. And usually, you know that Danny, <clears throat> the names mean something uh, in the Old Testament. So, Taban, of course, at, just at the name, you can stop and ask myself a question. Is God the judge in my life? Is God ruling in my life? Or it's I'm being led with my mind? Or in the, um, the case of Ahab, he's being led by his, uh, uh, his desires and his wife, right? That's a question. Leave it kida on the side for another day, maybe uh, another different meeting. We can we can discuss more. So in chapter seventeen, then Jehoshaphat, his son, talking about Asa, reigned in his place in the place of Asa, and strengthened himself against Israel. And he placed troops in all Israel. When he says against Israel, he's referring to who? Referring to the north kingdom against Ahab, right? Or whoever the king that in between, okay? As we're going to see. Like. So he put troops there in all the fortified cities of Judah and set garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim, which Asa, his father, had taken. Now the Lord was with Jehoshaphat. Because he walked in the former ways of his father, David, he did not seek the Baals. And we know, remember, Baal is the god for uh, Jezebel and her family and the north and all of that. And they became very popular. But sought uh, the god of his father and walked in his commandments. And not according to the acts of Israel, not like Israel, not like Ahab. Therefore, the Lord established the kingdom in his hands. And all, Ju uh, and all Judah gave presents to Jehoshaphat. And he had riches and honor in abundance. And his heart took delight in the ways of the Lord. Very nice king, right? So far, very nice king. He's doing everything right. He's, he's, he's just going according to the book. Um, riches, he has. Godly, he got. God loves him back for sure. Uh, and then you see that means he needs to do certain things. Here's the first thing that he did. And his, his heart delight in the ways of the Lord. Moreover. He removed the high places and the wooden images from Judah. If you want to follow God, if you want to go according to God, I need to uproot. I need to uproot anything that takes me away from God. Okay. And in fact, to say, I love God and still walk with the same friends that will take me away from God. It does not work. 
if I say I'm going to follow God, and then at the same time, you know, I want to uh, keep all the, the things that, you know, contradict God in my house, right? So I have to be careful whether, yes, Yusuf. I have a question. If someone can see it, like, I don't believe in God, or like, I can do it wherever I want. Hmm? Like, I can believe in, if someone can say, like, I believe in God, but like, I can do like whatever I want, like, still. So. Like, what's your answer to that? What do you mean? I, I can believe in God and you can I do... Can believe in Jesus and, like, mm -hmm. and but, like, I can still sin whatever I want. Yeah. Um, we're going to look at the just the name. Is God judge in my life? If I believe in God, believing in something, that means I follow its, its rules, right? Uh, yeah, if I believe in Canada, like I believe like I'm Canadian, you know, you, 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 you like you want to be Canadian, then I'm going to follow the rules of Canada, right? Uh, if, if you go to a different country, right, then I follow the rules of that country because I want to live there. I want to be associated. I want to be, you know, established according to that country. So believing in 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 something without doing uh, anything about, like without living that life means nothing. And um, in the Bible also it says, uh, Satan believes in God. Satan believes in God, it says in the Bible. But his way that he believes in God, he, he trembles in the presence of God, right? God's presence like trembles him, like he is not comfortable with that, right? So that's how I would answer believing in, in, in God or believing in anything uh, requires the person to uh, follow that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Um, thank you. Good, Yusuf. Bring good, good stuff. So very important, if I believe in God, then I need to uproot certain things. But I also I need to be building certain things. And this is what Jehoshaphat did. If you read, we're just going to read really quick because I don't want to stop in here too much. Also in the third year, his reign, he, he sent his leaders and he gives a list of leaders. What, where did he send them? Hmm? He sent them so that they taught in Judah and had the book of the law of the Lord with them. They went through all out all the cities of Judah and taught the people. So he's not just about himself, but now he's sending leaders to basically what? To preach and to open the, the book and the, the, the law of God and teach the people about what God asks people to, to do, how people should live. Right. So uh, this is what we also need to do. We need to speak up uh, to other people through our actions first. And then, of course, when it's the right time through our words and the fear of the Lord fell on all the kingdoms of the Lord of the lands that were around Judah so that they did not make war against Jehoshaphat. Yani people around in his uh, other kingdoms. Right. When they see this, like there is fear. No, like this guy is not just any king. No, he has like a, a power, you know, and it's just it touches you, you know. Yani for me, myself, for example, I can tell you like one time I came, Yani, someone like just recently, Keda, like I came across someone who's really. I, I you can I can just tell like really really I don't know close to God like and and you cannot just you cannot even resist to be with this man such a holy person you just and 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 like and just any word he speaks like you like that's so nice and it touches you like he's not saying anything special but he he just the uh, he says, Abuna, thank you so much for having me today. And it's like, 
but it touches you like it's so different. It's so, so different. Okay. It's not something you can explain or you can write about, but definitely it's something you can just relate to. You can just feel it. You know, this is what happened with people around him. So, and this is what needs to happen in our lives too. So also some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat presents silver and tribe. I just want to reach the next uh, verse. And Arabians brought him flocks, 7,700 rams. So they brought him lots of presents. So Jehoshaphat became increasingly powerful and he built fortresses and storage cities in Judah. And he had much property in the cities of Judah and the men of war, mighty men of valor, were in Jerusalem. These are these numbers according to their father's houses. And then he starts listing them. Okay. Uh, in chapter 18, uh, it tells the same story that we're going to read now from 1 Kings chapter 22, but in slightly different details. So let's go back to 1 Kings chapter 22. Uh, with Adil, and then we can see the details there. And if we can, if we have time, we can fill in some of the details from chapter 18 in Second Chronicles. Okay, this is just giving you an idea of who Jehoshaphat is that we're about to talk about, who's going to have kind of like an alliance or like a, a treaty with Ahab. Go ahead. So Jehoshaphat. Is the king of which part of Israel? North or south? Okay. South. Very good. Who was it at the north? Very good. Uh -huh. Okay, very good. Yes, sir. Yeah. So we're going to start reading from um, the first verse of the first king, chapter 22. And as Abuna said, chapter 22 is the last chapter in the book of first kings. Before we start reading, I just want to tell you that if you notice, if you followed with us from the beginning of uh, uh, the book of First Kings, it talks about kings, the north and the south. Um, yes, it is in a historical way, but the Bible is not about telling history. It's not about telling stories. The, the reason the Bible mentioned this period of time in the life of the Israelites, which is approximately 450 years, this period of time ended by the captivity, by the way, ended by the captivity, which started from the north. Um, the reason the Bible mentioned something like this to show how God deals with different kinds of people. This is the whole purpose of any book when you read the Bible. What is the spiritual message behind it? It's not about stories or history or nothing like that at all. But you see, you see how God was dealing with Ahab and how many times God giving him chances to repent, to come back. Clear, very strong miracles happened in front of him. Remember when what happened when Elijah brought the 400 prophets of Baal and told them, Yalla, let's see which God is the true God. And we saw what happened. The fire came from heaven and consumed Elijah's sacrifice and the other people, nothing happened. This was a clear, very strong miracle in front of Ahab, and yet he did not repent. He did not repent. So the, the purpose of studying the book of First Kings and Second, Second Kings is to see how God deals with each character and how which is, each character represents me, represents probably you. And it's, it's very nice when we look in the Bible, it's like a mirror. You see yourself here. <clears throat> First verse. Now this first verse of chapter 22. Now three years passed without war between Syria and Israel. Then it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, the king of the south, went down to visit the king of Israel. Jehoshaphat went to visit the king of Israel. Remember, they are almost one family because the kids are married. And the king of Israel said to, the, to his servants, while Jehoshaphat was there with Ahab, and it's a big day because the king of the south is visiting 
the king of the north. So the king Ahab said, do you know that Ramoth in Gilead is ours? But we hesitate to take it out of the, of the hand of the king of Syria. So he said to Jehoshaphat, will you go with me to fight at Ramoth, at Ramoth Gilead? Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. Also Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, please inquire for the word of the Lord today. So while we're sitting in this big party, the two kings together, remember Ahab is a very tricky guy. He's not an, an easy guy, he's not a straightforward guy. Suddenly in this beautiful event, Ahab brought up a political problem. And he said, do you know that Ramoth of in Gilead is ours? There was a piece of land, or let's call it a province, that's supposed to belong to the king of Israel, which is the northern king, kingdom. And this piece of land is occupied by the Syrians. So the king of Israel said, do you know this part of land is ours? And we didn't try to take it. So he said to Jehoshaphat, will you go with me? Like he put, Jehoshaphat is coming to visit him. He put him in a situation, you know, he's a visitor. So he told him, would you come and, and war in, in war with me? Jehoshaphat didn't, again, that's another mistake. Didn't pray, didn't tell him, okay, I will, let me, give me a few days. I will pray and see, I'll get back to you. No, but Jehoshaphat made an instant decision. And he said to the king of the north, Ahab, he said to him, of course, my people are your people. My horses are your horses. Of course, I'm with you all the way. And apparently after he said that, he started to think about it, retracted a little bit. He said, okay, he said to the king of uh, the north, he, came, he said to Ahab, but um, why don't we inquire from the Lord? We inquire for the word of the Lord today. Why don't we ask God? He felt in a way, he said it very quickly. <clears throat> so the king of Israel, verse six, then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men and said to them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to fight or shall I refrain? So the king of Israel brought in 400 prophets. Of course, here the word of prophets for, the, for, the, for King Ahab is what? False prophets. They all worship idols. So King of uh, Ahab said, of course, you want to acquire the word of the Lord? Bring the prophets. So they brought 400 of them. None of them, none, not a single one, is a good prophet. All of them were false prophets. And the king asked them, shall I go again? Shall I go on this war or no? So, of course, they all want to make the king happy. So they said, go up, for the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. Jehoshaphat felt it. What is this? Felt it right away. He's a, he's a, remember, he's a good guy. He's a good man. He's a righteous man. He felt that these 400 people, like, you represent nothing. So, and Jehoshaphat said, is there not a, still a prophet of the Lord here? So he, he, don't, he didn't want to say, I don't believe these people. But he said, there is not even a single prophet left. Is that all the prophets in Israel? So the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, there is still one man, Micaiah, the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him because he doesn't, he doesn't prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat... Did he say, and did he Jehoshaphat, say Isaiah? Sorry. He said Micah. Micah. Oh, but, but wasn't Isaiah wasn't Isaiah alive at that time? No, no, not yet. Not yet. Not yet Isaiah. 
So you mean Elijah? So, sorry, yes, I meant Elijah. I meant Elijah. Yes, Elijah, was, was, yes. Elijah was still alive, but okay. Elijah, Elijah was hiding during all this time. Apparently was in isolation or whatever. Hmm. He was not in the picture at all for the last three years. Last time okay. we heard about Elijah when he went to Ahab after the incident with, after with Isabel, Naboth and told him yeah. what's going to happen to him. Yeah. And after yeah. that, we haven't heard about Elijah. We're going to hear okay. about him next time in First King, in, in First Chapter, Second King. Second. Yeah. Didn't God yeah. No, no. He just came and delivered the message and bye bye. Yeah. Kind of. He's yeah. like in the transition, uh, transition uh, stages. To Elisha, yeah. transitioning everything to Elisha. Yeah. So he's he's very low. He's playing very low uh, key. Uh, only like what uh, you know, God tells him, go tell him. Uh, he, like he's his the go to when like he really wants to take off like a hub. You know, when Elijah shows up, that means something huge is is gonna happen. That's why every time you know a hub sees Elijah, tells him. Like, oh, you trouble of my house and my people. And then he tells him what? Huh? Yeah. He tells him what I do. And to open it up. I get now, Elijah. He told him you and your father's house. Now for Bible. And then the Bible. Truly. So Jehoshaphat uh, felt, as I said, felt in this 400 people to think anything. And he said, is there any, anyone else or any, any other prophet left? So the king said, yeah, there is only one guy left. With his, his name is Micah, the son of Imla. Micah, apparently one of Elijah's disciples. But the king of Israel said, I hate him because he never prophesied good about me, okay? Apparently each time Micah comes to the king, he follows the same style like Elijah and give him, he gives him the bad news. And uh, I, I wanna stop here for a second because he, the king of Israel said, I hate him. And sometimes we do the same thing. Anyone comes to us and tell us something true about us, Sometimes we hate him. Someone, if someone comes in and tell me, you know, Adele, I don't like something about you, which is so and so. I'm not gonna like this guy, right? I don't wanna see his face again. Because each time I see him, he tells me something. But you know what? He might be right. He might be right. But we all do the same thing like, I hope not all, some of us, we do like the King Ahab. We hate who tells us the truth or who, we hate who tells us something that we need to fix in our lives. We should not. Ahab, if he would have listened to Micah, his life would have been totally changed. And um, anyway, so he told Jehoshaphat, yes, we still have Micah, but don't expect that he will say any good any good thing about me. You know, one of the things that are nowadays yani, really tough is like you go and ask a good friend and they tell you, you know what? You, you're you not right. It's your fault, right? You say, how come it's my fault? But didn't you see what this person did and what they said about me and they did that, 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 right? And then your friend comes and says, I have the Bible, and the Bible says, you know, love your enemy. There is there is no condition here. Love your enemy. Actually, the Bible is telling you to love the person who did you wrong. The Bible is telling you to, you know, to bless those who cursed you. Right? The Bible is not saying, oh, but love your enemies, those who are doing you good. So how are they going to be my enemy? Like, how are they my enemy? If they are doing me good, you get my like, yeah. And sometimes, like, we think like I can just love the people who are doing me good, but I am entitled to hate, to hate 
the person who are speaking against me, whether they're right or wrong, like Adil is saying here, I'm going to hate them. That does not, you know, change a single bit of the commandment of Jesus Christ to love the enemy. Nothing. The commandment is love your enemy. Done. There is no condition. And we, I think we spoke about this before. Like sometimes even in the world, in the, the most perfect justice system, right? It tells you like, oh, if you steal, but you know, if, we, if you can justify your position because whatever, there is a way for you out. If you kill, but if you can prove that it was like, uh, you know, a self-defense, there is kind of like a, a way out of this, right? Mm -hmm. But the Bible is very absolute. You know, when you read the commandments, it's very absolute. Does not give you a, a, like a, a conditional or like a situation or there is like, a, a, you know, a clause or like another, uh, maybe you can um, uh, make an exception. Okay. Actually, sometimes even we do that with Abuna. And sometimes we know that Abuna is so and so is so strict in a certain area. So I'm not going to go and ask him about this. I'm going to go to another Abu. Sometimes we do that. Sometimes even we change our father of confession because I, he, he, I know what he's going to tell me and I'm going to go to somebody else. Anyway, I'm just giving you some examples that, see, this is, again, this is the beauty about reading and studying the Bible. Even so, we think it's his, history. No, it's not history. Ahab is like me. He doesn't like to see Micah because each time Micah, Micah comes to him, he tells him something bad about him and he should fix. I do the same thing. I don't want to hear or see someone each time he sees me. You're not good in this. You're not good in this. No, I'm not, so I'm not gonna, I don't want to see you again. Anyway, verse 9. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Bring Micah the son of Imla quickly. Now, I want you to imagine the two kings are sitting, the 400 prophets are sitting, and the 400 prophets told the king, go ahead, go to the war. Now, Jehoshaphat said, bring another, do you have anyone else? They said, yes, Micah. So everybody now is waiting for Micah to come. The king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, having put on their robes, sat each on his throne at the threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria. Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. He explains that how, how, how it looked like. Now Zedekiah, the son of Shena, had made horns of iron for himself, and he said, Thus says the Lord, with this, with this you shall go. Which you shall go the Syrians until they are destroyed. One of the false prophets, his name is Zedek Zedekiah, made uh, horns of iron, put it on his head, and said, "With these two head, with these two horns, God said that you will win the war." And all the prophets prophesied, so saying, "Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper." For the Lord will deliver it into the king's hand. Then the messenger, remember, a messenger went to bring who? Micah, right? Then the messenger who had gone to call Micah spoke to him saying, now listen, the words of the prophets with one accord encouraged the king. So the messenger is telling Micah, everybody, encourage the king. In Tatigi way, shh, well, yes, they are right. And the messenger is telling him what, 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 what to say. Okay? So he's telling him, the prophets with one accord encourage the king, please let your words be like the words of one of them and speak encouragement. You give him in the speech, Leo has to say. He's giving him the script, basically. And Micah said, as the Lord lives, whatever the Lord says to me, that I will speak. So don't tell me what I will say, what I have to say. Whatever the, the Lord tells me, that's what I'm going to say. Then he came to the king and 
And the king said to him, Micah, shall we go to war against the of Gilead or shall we refrain? And he answered to him, go and prosper for the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. As if he wants to tell him, is that what you want to hear from me? Go and prosper. The Lord will give it, will give it to you. Of course, the Lord knew that this is not what he wants to say. So he said, so the king said to him, how many times shall I make you swear that you tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? I know you are not telling me the truth. Tell me. Now, Michael will say the truth. Then he said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains, a sheep that has that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let each return to his house in peace. So that means what? The world would be a disaster. The prophet says, I saw all Israel scattered and no leader, no master. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, didn't I tell you he would not prophesy good concerning me but evil? Didn't I tell you this guy will, he will never tell me something good? Then Micah said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. Micah will explain how this will work. How, not, how did this 400 prophets say, so, say to the king, go and you will win the war. He will explain how these false prophets prophesied. Micah said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by on his right hand and on his left. Micah is saying what he saw. He saw the, the Lord God sitting on his throne and all, all the hosts of heaven standing by. And the Lord said, now this, the host of heaven in front of God, which Micah saw, most of them were the devils. And that shows, by the way, that happened. Do you remember happened when in the Bible that the devil came and present, was present in front of God? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Exactly. The story of Job. Mm -hmm. When God was there and the devil came and told, and God said, did you see my, my servant Job? So the devil started to tell him, well, because you give him everything, what do you expect? Okay, so the devil, that shows that in heaven, the devil can stand before God. God allows him, allows him to stand before him. And that happened here. And Micah is, is saying, because Micah, his eyes goes beyond heaven and he sees what happened there? So Micah said, I saw God sitting on his throne and the devils in front of him. And the Lord said, who will persuade Ahab to go up that he may, that he may fall at Ramoth Gilead? God is asking the devil, who will do that? Who persuade Ahab to go to war? So one spoke, who's one? One of the devils spoke in this manner and, and another spoke in that manner. Then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. One of the devils said, I will persuade him. Then the Lord said, in what way? How are you going to persuade him, Mr. Devil? So he said, I'll go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. See, that was the mechanism behind it. The devil will said, I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all the prophets. So those 400 prophets were moved by a lying spirit. The spirit of the devil came on them and made them lie. And the Lord said, you shall persuade him and also prevail. Go out and do so. And that shows that the devil cannot do anything except God permit them. See here? 
The Lord said, you shall persuade him and also prevail. Go out and do so. The devil cannot harm, cannot do anything to anyone except, except by God's permission. Very clear. Of course, if we, uh, when we go, if you want to search the New Testament and get this <clears throat> verse out for me, it would be great. Uh, this is mentioned by our Lord Jesus Christ. Search it, please. Um, when he says to the Pharisees, you know, uh, basically like you're liars and, and the devil is your father because he is the father of all those who lie. Right? Look it up. Okay. Uh, the father of all uh, liars, the devil. Right? And, and this is where it uh, this is where um it's really bad and sometimes we think like it's a white lie or it's like uh, it's an easy it's a it's not so bad but this is what it is like it looks from outside it goes with the theme of everything but at the end of the day it's a lying spirit I found it. yeah where um john chapter 8 verse 44 John chapter eight. Yeah, thank you. Marina can say for you, John. Yeah. Haram. <laughs> Verse 44. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, he said, why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are your father, the devil, and the, uh, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. And the father of it. Okay. So uh, it's very clear, Yanni, how we... It's important to link, link the, the, the New Testament to the Old Testament. And when you see something like this, Jesus Christ explains it in the New Testament and says, this is where it is. So they understand. They understand in the New Testament when, when Jesus Christ speaks about these events or he refers to like the father of all lies and things like that, he's, he's, he's speaking about them. Okay. But we need to apply this to ourselves. Jesus Christ, he says, why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. And that's the, uh, that's the key for, for this story. Because uh, Ahab is not able to listen to God's word. Not just one prophecy. Continue, Andy. Therefore, look, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours, and the Lord has declared disaster against you. Micah was talking to the king and told him how these 400 prophets said what, what they had to say because a, a, a lying spirit spoke through all of them and told him very clearly, that a disaster will come against you. Now Zedekiah, the son of Cana, went near and struck Micah on the cheek and said, which way did the spirit from the Lord go for me to speak to you? One of the false prophets, the God, the same guy who did the horns, came and struck Micah. And Micah said, indeed, you shall see on the day when you go into, into an inner chamber to hide. Micah said to the guy who, who hit him, the day will come that you will be trying to find a room to hide from the enemy. So the king of Israel said, take Micah and return him to Amon, the governor of the city, and do Josh, the king's son, and say, thus said the king, put this fellow in prison and feed him with bread of affliction and water of affliction until I come in peace. So the king ordered that Micah to be put in prison, and not only in prison, but with a very limited amount of food and water 
till he comes in peace, which will never happen because he will never come. The, will never the, come, next, period. the next time, exactly. the next verses. <laughs> but Micah said, if you ever return in peace, look how strong these prophets are. If you ever imagine the king is telling so and so, put him in, in prison and give him little food and little water till I come. And Micah said, <laughs> if you come, if you come, okay? <laughs> as, if, as if the king wants to scare him to change his word or change what he said, but Micah obviously did not change anything. If you ever return in peace, the Lord has not spoken to me. If you ever return in peace, then God did not speak to me and I was lying. Take heed all you people. So the king of Israel and Joshua, how Shaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead, even though mm -hmm. after they heard from Micah, they insisted and went into the war. I'm going to be very quickly, because I have to finish how in five much, minutes. How much time do you have? Just want to ask you a question. Think about it until the end. Obviously, you read all of this, and you're looking back and sitting like, why he is not listening is very obvious. Like, why? Uh, why? Why he is not listening? And many times in my life as well, like, so many things are just so crystal clear what God wants me to do. And why I'm not listening? Why these people do not listen? Why many times I don't listen, you know, and follow? Why? It, it seems like so simple. It seems like just logical you know any any simple any child will just but why think about this question until the end of verse and the king of israel said to jehoshaphat i will discuss myself and go into battle but you put on your robes so the king of israel distinguished disgust himself and went into the battle see here i have again being very tricky guy, he told Jehoshaphat, the king of the south, told him, you know what, let's do this. You, you wear your clothes as the king, and I will change my clothes and look like any other soldier. Okay? And let's go to the world this way. Obviously, why? Because if they want to kill the king, then they're going to kill who? Jehoshaphat. Why are you Okay, very tricky guy. He's we still keeping the word of Micah in the back of his exactly. Like, mm, ah. Okay, just in just case, case. Just, just in, in case. case. It's true. Very naive, very green. Ah, ah. Okay. Ah, I have a king, I'm a king. So it was when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat. Now, when the enemies saw Jehoshaphat, okay. They said, surely this is the king of Israel. Of course, look at his chariot. Look the way he, he dresses. This is the king. Okay? Therefore, they returned the side to fight against him, and the Jehoshaphat cried out. They came around him, surrounded him, and Jehoshaphat cried out. And it happened when the captains of the chariot saw, saw that it was not the king of Israel, that they returned back from pursuing him. When they came very near, they found out, no, this is not the king of Israel. Manish, we're just gonna uh, divert a little bit, Manish Adel, just to, because cry out, because this word, and it has more details in Second Chronicles chapter 18. So if we just switch just for that small detail, because this is very important. Jehoshaphat, we know he's a good guy, but for some reason, and we like in the beginning of chapter 18, it says Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance, and by marriage, he allied himself with Ahab. This is one of his mistakes that he, by marriage, somehow. Uh, but for some reason, maybe he also thought, like, I have everything, God is with me, I should be okay, I should not fear anything, I can just associate myself with anyone and whoever. So, um, if we go to chapter 18, verse 31. So, it was when the captains of the chariot saw Jehoshaphat, they said, it is the king of Israel. Like exactly what, what we read there, right? But listen to this. Therefore, they surrounded him to attack. But 
Jehoshaphat cried out. Now this is the explanation, more detail. And the Lord helped him, and the Lord uh, diverted them from him. Okay, you see, when he cried out. He cried out to who? To God, and God intervened, and God kind of like cleared the way. Okay, okay. Now we can go back to uh, <laughs> First Kings chapter. Sorry, man. Yeah, yeah. If if details like small, very tiny, small details, we need to just wrap our heads around it. Why he cried out and what happened? Okay. You switch there, you find a little bit more explanation in Second Chronicles chapter 18, and then we go back to uh, uh, sec uh, First Kings chapter 22. Okay? Now a certain man, verse 34, now a certain man drew a bow at a random and struck the king of Israel between the joints of his armor. See, but here is he the hand of God. A certain man from the enemy, by mistake, by mistake, through the arrow and struck the king of Israel. He didn't know that this is the king of Israel, okay? And struck the king of Israel between the joints of his armor. Uh, his armor that I don't know, he put, he put in the, on his body to protect him, but it used to be connected through some rings. So the arrow went through the hole between the rings. Like if this guy tries to do it 100 times, he will never get it. But see when God wants something to happen, Okay, that's why the, the Bible sometimes mentions mention so much details in certain things, and we wonder why. It says here, between the joints of his are like the Bible won't, tries to say that <laughs> it was almost impossible. Impossible. This is the hand of God. So he said, the king of Israel said, said to the driver of his chariot, turn around and take me out of the battle, for I am wounded. The battle increased that day, and the king was propped up in his chariot facing the Syrians and died at evening. King Ahab finally died. The blood ran out from the wound onto the floor of the chariot. Look at the details here. The Bible wants to draw our attention to something going to happen. His blood, now he was on the chariot, his blood came to the floor of his chariot. Then as the, as the sun was going down, a shout went throughout the army saying, every man to his city. Remember when Micah said, all men will be scattered. Every man to his city and every man to his own country. As the king, so the king died and was brought to Samaria and they buried the king in Samaria. Then someone washed the chariot at a pool in Samaria, and the dogs licked up his blood while the harlots beat according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken. So Elijah's prophecies three years ago when he told him, the dogs will lick your blood as they did to the blood of Naboth happened, happened in this event. And now the rest of acts of all the acts of Ahab and the ivory house which he has built and all the city has built are not written in the book of Chronicles of the King of Israel. Uh, basically, that's the end of, of the chapter. Um, uh, and, and the rest of it will, will be continued or explained in the book of mm -hmm. Second Kings. And uh, we notice that, yeah, and we continue reading Jehoshaphat. In verse 41, he returned back safely, okay? Jehoshaphat returned back safely, and uh, he continued to reign in, in Judea and um, made peace uh, with the king of Israel. Uh, and it says, like, the rest of also the story of Jehoshaphat is written in the book of Chronicles, where we read that part. Um, Anything else had to work here? Mm -hmm. can, can and then Ahaz, Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, became king over Samaria in the 17th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned two years over Israel. He, uh, he did evil, so that the son of Ahab also did evil in the sight of the Lord, 
and walked in the way of his father and the way of his mother, Jezebel, and in the way of uh, Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. You remember how we spoke about Jeroboam? Jeroboam, uh, you know how God, like always, uh, you know, when, when a bad king comes, he always refers to who? Jeroboam as like the, 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 the example of how bad kings go. And whenever a good king comes and does well, right? The Bible speaks and refers to David, the king, right? So those are the two uh, names that we always hear, right? They did evil as so-and-so. And, -so. and um, so he served Baal and worshiped him and provoked the Lord God of Israel to anger according to all that his father uh, has done. And uh, now we saw what happened with Ahab, okay? Now his son is going also to face something, just like how God used to bring Elijah to Ahab when there is a need. Drastic measures require also what dr drastic, you know, uh, man to come out. So in, in about three weeks from now, okay, we will come back if you want to know what's going to happen to this king. And Elijah is going to come back to the scene, and we're going to see how Elijah is going to uh, deal with this um, uh, uh, king. Uh, that will be in Second Kings, okay? Now, back to the question I asked you, why do you think when everything is crystal clear, why we don't see it, why we don't hear God's voice, why these, this king did not understand? Why didn't? Why, why they did not get it? Why? <laughs> the four. Okay. So that means uh, if we do, uh, if we do a vote, right? And, and uh, the majority wins, right? But does it? Right. Not with God, even if it's just one voice. Right. And that's why in our church, many times, like when I was being ordained, Masalan, they say, well, even if you get like all the votes or like everyone is, uh, you know, nominating you and everyone is happy. And, but if just one person, all what it takes, just one person to reach the Pope or the Bishop and says something that's legitimate. And it could stop. Doesn't matter. Okay. So it's it's the same idea. It's not just by vote. You know, we call it what? Uh, we don't call it voting. We call it uh, opinion. Huh? It's a yeah, it's like more like an opinion. We just would like to know your opinion. But God is going to say his opinion. And many people, they get so mad. Like, why you get mad? Like, thank you for your opinion. But is your opinion better than God's opinion? No. Right? So we got to be careful, like, with these things. Mariam, yeah. So what? Uh, why? Why do you think? Yeah. Um, because we want to be able to have an Arab mind that we're finding ourselves from seeing God's wisdom. Yeah. We want to do whatever that's in our minds, blinding us from seeing God's wisdom. But in this case, he asked. He, he knew Mike is going to come and say something opposite or like contradicts him. He wouldn't have gotten to the Bishop. So. Yeah. So, uh, good point. So, sometimes I might not be maybe the right person to speak to my friend or to persuade them from doing wrong things. But I could be the reason to give them guidance to speak to someone else who could speak, you know, wisdom to them, right? So I cannot, like, I, I don't have to be like, you know, the savior <laughs> of, of a person, but I could be part of a person's salvation, okay? Because God, of course, ultimately is the one who will, will, will save the person. 
right? And if I may just add, I should to conclude and we can go. Uh, many times we ask God for like specific things. We ask God for specific things only. And that's the issue. Like God, which job should I get? You don't pray. You don't speak to me all year. You don't, you know, uh, live with me. You don't follow me all year long. And you just come for this. And like for a week, I'm fasting. I'm praying. I'm reading my Bible, going to church, putting my name on the altar, you know, attending liturgies. I just want to know God's opinion on this one matter. It doesn't work like that. So it's more, it needs to be more of a life of relationship, a life of fellowship between me and God, or like a life of fellowship of me with God. And that's why many times we say what the Buna when he comes and says, and now the love of God, the father, the grace of his only begotten son, our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, the gift and communion and fellowship, fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. That means what? You're leaving here from now from church. Okay. Make your relationship because God, the father loves you and you have grace through Jesus Christ. Let the Holy Spirit have a fellowship in your life, to speak in your life, to speak in everything uh, that uh, everything that matters or does not matter in your life. Make it more of a fellowship. Make it a communion with God. Okay. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. A little bit. Abuna, a quick question. Abuna, yes. A quick question. How do I get to know? Uh, because uh, according to today's story, um, I have knew that these people were not true prophets uh, as the king of the north. But king, the king of the south uh, did not know that. Like, how did he know that this, like, this was not the word of God? So let's say, for example, if I go to a mm -hmm. priest and I ask for words of guidance. How do I make sure that this word of guidance is truly from God, not just from um, a good or a bad priest? Yeah, well, I, um, that's what I was saying. I have to have a fellowship with God. That means I don't go to Abun and ask him about one thing, only th that one time. Okay? And uh, I should be praying for Abuna that he will speak the word of God in my life or he will speak the word of truth to me and 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 you will experience it actually yani if i tell you sometimes i want i go to my father confession and i say lord yani speak to me through abuna when i go and speak to him and believe it or not like i ask the question and and we discuss the answer and whatever and then we move on and we speak about something else and actually i find the word of god in, in in completely in a different way he's saying something else how about this read this or you know this story was whatever happened uh, and he's not like paying attention i'm not and all of a sudden it hits me oh this is the word of god it's not the answer that abuna gave me even though the answer maybe he gives me is very general but in what he says like i find the word of god like it hits you like just what I just said, like the arrow today is like it hit where it's impossible to hit, you know? So I have to be yani, ready to hear the, 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 the word of God uh, and the direction of the Holy Spirit at all times. So I could ask Abuna the question and he might answer me, give me an answer or give me a generic or general an answer. But then the word of God comes through completely different way. I got okay. it. Thank you. Thank you, Buna. That yeah. makes sense. Well, just to, just to, to correct you, there is no such thing called bad Abuna. Okay, we do not believe in that. <laughs> yes, of there course. Not, we, don't, we do not exist. Every yes, Abuna yes. is a Micah. Okay. Every Abuna is, who is like Micah. 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 Okay? Uh, and in Kings Adin, I know 400. Prophets, they were worshiping idols. So very clear. We believe in every other Abu, every Abuna we see is a, is a mic. Now, whether I accept his word or not, that's a different story. That's got up it. to you. That's up to you. I got it. 
Okay, and when Abuna, may God forbid, and if, if that's why, by the way, we see if any Abuna goes beyond or be away from the, 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 the teaching of the church, you see, for instance, the Holy Synod or the Pope, what do, what they do? They bring Abuna here. Abuna, this is wrong. You should not say that. You should not do that. If Abuna listens, great. If he doesn't, what, what do they do to Abuna? Out. Out. They stop him in a several ways, but to the extent that they make excommunicate him. And it happened a lot in the history of the church. Why? Because the church cannot leave any bad abuna. Every one of the Michael. Got right? it. Huh? Got it. Yeah. So, so, so to clarify, oh, the prophets, so the, <laughs> the, the prophets were not God's prophets. Those, those 400 prophets were yeah. not God's prophets. No. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Got <laughs> Thank you, Ahmad. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray.